This is a 1999 GMC Sierra 1500. It's got 290,000 miles on it. Let's confirm that. Oh, there she is. 298.22. Step one, let's take it for a quick drive and uh, see if we can get her leaking. We'll take a gander at her. Well, it's not great. It is worth mentioning, uh, I've never done this before, nor am I a mechanic, but uh, it's just nuts and bolts and that kind of thing. So let me get the shop set up because this is what we're working with today. Some of you might be asking how come we're not working on it at the barn. The tractor is in pieces over there and you got to learn to spread out your misery. You can't put all your broken down stuff in one spot. Let me get the slide out of the way and get the shop set up. So we are up off the ground on the front. I hope that that's enough. Got the wheels chalked, got this real fancy anti-wheel roll device because we're gonna be taking out the make it not rolls here in just a little bit. That's gonna be the drive shaft if you're not familiar with the technical terms here. Oh gosh. Let's see. We're sitting on everything really nice. Yeah, I don't see any issues with any of that. The way we're sitting on it all, looks good. Looks secure. We'll go ahead and disconnect the battery real quick. Real quick, too. Each side of that. This is the video you always see online where they're working in their driveway. They take the drive shaft off. They don't have the rear, rear wheel secured and then the car rolls over. We're gonna try real hard. To avoid that, I just threw some guesses in a box. We'll see what it does. Guess number one, wrong. All right. Guess number two, perfect, seven sixteenths. would appear that we will also also be replacing that universal joint. The rumor has it, this should just pull out. Magic. I would guess that this little plate has to come off. I'm almost thinking that this whole cross member might have to come off. Yeah, I would say that it does. It does support the transmission. Well, is it worth taking this off individually or just going ahead and taking the whole cross member off? Let's take this off individually. One thing at a time. Okay. Throw an extension on there. There he is. I don't know where. If it needs replaced, this is definitely a good time to do it.
Best way I know not lose bolts is just put them back in what they came out of. And there we go to put it all back together. Everything should be where you need it, if it's an option anyway. boot right here we have to get off um, I don't know so I just use a screwdriver to pop that clip off I'm pretty sure that's a one-time deal so I'll have to come up with a different different clamp for that boot but, uh, I think I may go ahead and just take this one off too Maybe I should have left that one on. I don't know. But I'm going to take that one off too and uh, get that boot off there so we can get that front drive shaft off. There we go. <sighs> Microphone died, so adjust your volume accordingly. We're going to do the exhaust next. I don't have any pit and trading fluid with me for whatever reason, but. Um, Got some transmission fluid and this situation rigged up. So we'll just let this in soak. If I can hit it. Oh, not in the sled. Oh, dear. And then uh, see if we can't get them, uh, get it off that end. Surprises me. I expected the stud to come in all. I shot some of that transmission. <laughs> wow, well, where I'm at right under that oil leak. I'm getting, I'm getting a good oil bath. No rust tonight. Anywho, I uh, shot some of that transmission fluid up on those bolts there. Oh, that's my head. Ow. Okay. Oh, there she lives. What if I made a thing where you like pulled a trigger and it were da, 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 and it's something like that? That would be. Wouldn't that be something? That'd be something. <laughs> it's gonna be hard to convince people this thing doesn't have a transmission leak. There's all the fluid everywhere, isn't it? All right, I'm not gonna take this one all the way off. I'm gonna just get the nut loosened. Kind of let her hang. Both sides are kind of hangling right. <laughs> hangling? They're both hangling right now. Whatever the heck that means. We gotta get the uh, O2 sensors disconnected on both of these. Where the heck does that one run? Wild ride. Must hop up in that freight somewhere. We're not taking the O2 sensors out because Lord knows we don't want to pay for replacing those if we're gonna 
get rid of this thing. Plus, it's not kicking in codes. Why would you? So we gotta just get the O2 sensors disconnected from the harness, and then, and then, and then I don't know. Then we're doing something. So there's two off and one just kind of hanging out supporting that. All three of these are off. There's three total. And O2 sensor harness is disconnected on both of them. So the next thing, slide on down here, is to get these undone. Then we'll take that last nut off and see if we can't right on out. Boomer's over here all mad because we're not working on the barn like we're supposed to be. Don't, now, no. You don't have to sabotage my projects just because I'm not working on your house. Gosh dang, bud. Come on. Show a little respect. Just so your expectations are, are where they need to be, I don't think I've ever gotten uh, this bolt here at this junction on an exhaust system off without breaking them. It's a miracle if you can, but that's just kind of, you know, I want to make sure your expectations are where they need to be. It's getting ready to break. Here we go. There we go. Ta da. Magic. Yeah, well, scared me, that's for sure. Oh. Yeah, just nice and easy there, bud. Okay. Okay. Yeah, getting that cross member out of the way. Getting that cross member out of the way so we could uh, get the exhaust out. Made things a lot easier. There were six bolts, three on each side, 18 millimeter, nutted up through the frame. So you had to have a wrench or a socket on both sides. But not bad. They came out really easy, actually. Then you have to use a breaker bar. Just used um, two ratchets. You see the starter right here. Look how much... It's been leaking for a while. We've been throwing. There is no salt corrosion down here, sir. Whatsoever. Uh, the starter's going to come off. And then this little inspection cover, you'll see. And then we'll turn the flywheel. And there's some bolts in there to hold that flywheel. Try to see if we can't get those bolts out of there. come all the way up it just needs to be not attached would be my assumption can you see that right there that's what I'm taking out it's not what I expected so I'm not 100% sure that I'm taking out the right thing here but uh, it's coming loose so so there's one I think there's three total I think there are three total I'm not 100% sure we'll just keep spinning around until we find them We'll get them all out of there. And then we'll make all the disconnections on the uh, transmission, all the wiring harnesses, oil coolers, all that stuff. 
So we should just be down to some wiring harnesses, shifter cables, just some of that miscellaneous stuff. I've already got some bolts out of the bell housing. Now we're on to something here. Snap-on probably makes a specific tool for this. Oh, now we're on to something. Look, we got a little separation. Then we push those tabs in, and she slides right out of there, bud. And then I guess I'll just take it bolt off there. Well, you want to guess her? You want to guess her adjustable wrench? Yeah, me too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, adjustable wrench was the perfect size. And we're in reverse. I don't know what we're in. Okay. Does that not? Does it? Oh, it does. There it goes. There it goes. And then let's just put. Let's just put that back on there so we don't lose her. Okay. Here's what we're looking at. See these? I pried on them a little and nothing really moved. And I'm just, I don't want to break whatever's going on here. Because that's just going to hurt me in the long run. So we've got that one out, that off. But there's one more right in here. Might be able to sneak a wrench in on the, on the top side. By the way, if at any point you're watching this video and you're thinking, there's got to be a better way to do that, check out the comments. Um, there's a lot of experienced people that watch this channel. I am not experienced to this, like we talked about earlier. I'm just kind of fumbling my way through it. But there's a lot of experienced people that do watch the channel. So filter through the comments. And if you're curious about something or you think something should have been a little bit different, you might check there. You might find the answer you're looking for. Just did an even slow pressure there. Something tells me this is a sensor of some sort, so we don't want to mess with it as far as turning it. We'll just try to tuck this up out of the way safely and gently. I don't know if that's the best way to do that. We'll find out when we put it all back together. Bell housing here, so now we've got these, I'm assuming some kind of oil cooler line. Would that give me some extra room if I had to take that off real quick? What is that? Just a heat shield of some sort, isn't it? That might give me just a little bit more room. Hey, bud, not a flower. Oh, that give me a little more room. Oh, yeah, look at the amount of room it. We got. Oh, you got one of the hands. So once I got that away, there's these little clips. I've just got a little pick. And if we get this transmission out of here, if we get this transmission out of here, when we get this transmission out of here, some of the stuff that's hard to show on camera just because of where we're at. I'll show you a little bit more close up. But there's a clip on each one of these lines, and then we should be able to, with some gentle pressure, pop those out. Did I catch it? So both lines are out. Those came out fine. The top one didn't take any pressure at all. You're just able to kind of jerk it out. This bottom one took a little, but not much. Shouldn't take much. There's a bolt right there. It's a bell housing bolt, but it also holds on the uh, dipstick and a fill tube for the transmission. So I've got to take that out because there's a bracket right on there. Uh, got it. Y'all better be laying golden eggs over there. All right, then a little twisty, rocky action there. I 
don't know if it'll come all the way up. Just That'd be great if it did though. Certainly help me get that other bolt out there. Oh yeah, that'll pull out the rest of the way. Lovely. Look, you're not gonna believe the amount of luxury here. Look at this. Look at the amount. Oh, what luxury we have bestowed upon us. Good news is, there's nuts out. That's oh, where is? There's no more on this side, but I do believe you can see we still got the. I'm saving those to last. There's one more up in there, and it's got. A bunch of wiring harnesses and lines and stuff tied to it. Word of the day is going to be extensions. Extensions with a socket thing. Work? I don't know if it's going to work or not. It's got the same thing. I don't know if it's going to work or not. It's got the same thing. It's got that 13 nut first that holds on some wiring harnesses. And then, um, And then we gotta get to the 15, so let's see. Uh, all right, what's going on up there? All right, that did it. Oh man, all right. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I feel like I just got done beating a fight. Oh my gosh. So here is our absolutely foolproof plan. We've got the jack underneath it sitting on a board under the pan on the transmission. If everything works great, that board sits down on the cribbing because I don't have a tall enough jack to come all the way down. So we got to come down and stage it. So hopefully that board just sits right down on the cribbing and we can reset. We've got the back end, there's a ratchet strap across there holding the back end up. So the goal is to get the front end all the way down, provided we have enough clearance back here for that end to come up. And once we get that end on the ground, we'll come back here and try to get it lower down. I don't have a big enough jack or own anything big enough to drop the whole thing all at once. So we're gonna have to do this in steps. Hopefully she works. I got two more bolts up front here. She appears to be free to some extent. I don't know if we have enough clearance. But let's see what happens when we drop her down a little bit here. I'm gonna hit my cribbing like I want, it looks like it. I'm watching that top too, see if we got anything attached. Well, yeah. Let's 
All right. Looks like it's sitting. Okay. Done rolling slip. I wish I had to catch me in there. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That rotel jug cut. Put in there. Perfect. We'll catch the last quarter cup that's in there. Oh, easy, 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 easy. Nothing's tight, everything looks. That's got some tension on it, so that's probably good. Got quite a bit of tension on it. Oh, what the heck's that? I got one more wiring harness. One more wiring harness I gotta do. And then we're gonna see if we can't just drag this thing back on these boards and get it out of the way. I missed uh, I missed one harness here on the top, still tied up. Everything came off fine, nothing as far as all the uh, lines and wires and harnesses. You can see the oil cooler lines up there. Everything looks good. Nothing bad there. There's one thing that went wrong on the front. We'll show you that here in just a second. But let me get this wiring harness off and see if we can't get our drug back here. There's a little clip here. Get that off there. And then I think just this one. How's it hold on there? Looks good. There we go. Let's see if we can't just pull her back here. Um, let's try once. There we go. <laughs> Come here, transmit. There we go. That's probably far enough. So this is where those three bolts came out that we took off that were going through the flywheel. Whoops. These three bolts right here. That's where they went in. The torque converter. You can see, you can see the mistake I made right there. I didn't realize there's a top bolt. And I broke that off. There's that bolt right up there. So I need your guys' opinion on, on what you would do on this. You can buy these used bell housing covers, 70 bucks delivered all day long off eBay. I think in the most literal sense, a fellow could say they made a million of those things. If it were mine and I were keeping it, I think I'd just throw a big washer in and be done with it. But since I'm selling it, or thinking about selling it, I'm thinking about just ordering a bell housing cover to go on there. You guys tell me what you think. But I've got one, two, three, four, five, six bolts and we gotta take this flywheel off. This is the back side of the oil pan, right here. So if you don't have an impact, everything I read online said if you don't have an impact, this could be really hard to get these flywheel bolts off. Yeah, I didn't think so. But I saw a trick that actually looks pretty cool to be able to use a breaker bar. The issue is uh, obviously when you turn this, the engine's gonna turn whenever you put a breaker bar pressure on it. If you have an impact, normally you can buzz them out, but I do not. So I saw a trick, we're gonna try it. Trick or treat. Hopefully it's a treat. Hopefully, please be a treat. It's okay, sweetie. That's just, a, oh, it's a honeybee. Well, it's looking for something sweet. 
And it, it's, huh? Am I sweet? God damn it. Kiddo, you make my day, honey. You just, you make my day. So to hold the flywheel still while I turn it, I've got one of the transmission bolts in the beefiest transmission bolt hole I could find. And then a flywheel bolt just kind of shoved through a hole and then a wrench holding it. I can get a good angle on here. These really aren't on there too crazy, are they? Okay. Not on your face, not on your face. And speaking of that starter bolt riding around here, you can see it did a little bit of damage. You saw when we took the starter out, it had all the bolts it needed. Oh, starter's down here. All the bolts it needed. What we think happened is somebody replaced the starter, dropped a bolt down that inspection cover, and was too lazy to get it out, or just forgot about it. And it rode around in there until the flywheel caught it and flung it around. But you can see up here, too, it's caught a bolt and tried to pull it out. So the question is going to be, had that bolt already started backing out and then it snagged it or did it snag it and pull it and mess those threads up? We may be getting into a little bit more here. This is the cover. That's the bottom of it. This is the top of the, uh, this is the oil pan. Mm, maybe up to here too. Yeah, you can tell I'm not a mechanic. I don't know what I'm doing, but I do know this is the cover. That's the bottom of the cover there. You can see the bolts that go up and around and then this seal right there. But it's kind of starting to make sense why that's leaking. And that starter bolt rolled around in there. Looks like it might have damaged a couple bolts. I don't see any cracks here. Though. Like I said, this all looks superficial. Cosmetic, whatever you want to say it. Okay. That's as far as we're going to take that on this video. So that's as far as we're taking the GMC 1500 on this video. Like I said, I got to get the parts ordered. And I need your all's opinion on, on what you think. Should I... You can get those bell housing covers used off eBay, shipped to your door, 70 bucks all day long. Like I said, they made a million of them. They're easy to find. If I was going to keep it myself, I think I'd just put a washer on, but I'm selling it. Probably I'd do it right. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments, though, and if you got any tips and tricks on how to get this all back in here, or if you think I'm missing something, or if there's something I ought to do while I'm down here, obviously oil changes will be one of those. If there's something I need to do while I'm down here, and you're thinking of it, you know, holler at me. Let me know in the comments. I'm new. I'm learning. No idea what I'm doing. Just uh, trying to save a buck. The decision was pretty simple. Either go pay somebody more than what the truck is worth for them to fix it for me. Or, you know, get rid of the truck. Because leaking that much oil, you're going to end up with a problem in the long run. Or, you know, we're going to do more miles per gallon on the, on the oil than we will the gas. So I had to do something with it. If anything, it's, uh, you know, it's an automotive lesson. So, that's all I got. That's all I've got on this one. I have nothing else. Nothing else. Okay. Catch you on the next one, which will be painting that barn. We're painting the barn with the trim and doors on the side. That'll be the next one.